Hello everybody, my name is Jörn and I'd like to welcome you to my new video channel about the in and out tennis device. For general information about the system, you should visit the official in and out homepage. This channel provides you with a deeper insight and independent information. In the first video, I will test the system thoroughly to show you the strength and weakness of the system. In the coming videos, I will demonstrate that it is possible to use in and out to produce a professional match analysis with much more than the normal statistical data. I strongly believe that match analysis and associate training modules are the best way to benefit from in and out. But at first we have to understand the limitation of this system. My experience is based on one and a half years use of in and out. We analyzed 54 sets with about 4,000 shots and nearly 1,500 services. I have two net devices, version 2 and 1 version 3, with three cameras, as well as uh, two line devices. For the test, we installed two PERT net devices together with the new version 3 device. Later, we added two line devices. We wanted to see how accurate is the single device in comparison to the pair devices and the pair devices plus the line devices at the baseline. The test was carried out at a sunny day at a clay court without any shadows. The lines have been cleaned normally. The advantage of a clay court is that you can see precisely if a ball was in or out. The disadvantage is, however, that for the system it is much more difficult to detect the lines in the calibration process. But with the software version of June, the calibration for all three net devices worked without difficulties with three stars at both sides. Three stars is, however, the minimum which you should use. You should control if the calibration has been performed correctly by checking that the green lines cover the white lines. This is not always the case, even if the calibration shows three stars. For the test, we played always 40 balls as close as possible on each side lines, the baseline, and later the service field. If a ball was very close, we checked the imprint on the clay. The paired net devices worked very accurately, however, the single device had problems at the opposite side. Balls have been given in, although the replay function showed that the ball was out. The calibration was not correct, which is very difficult, however, to detect on the tiny screen. The result of the test are summarized on this table. As you can see, for two net devices paired, the side lines on the side of the net device and also opposite gave very good, very accurate results. Only very few errors were noted. The baseline, a little bit more errors, and the service was also quite accurate but some services, a very few, were not detected. Net balls in general are not detected. That's the weakness of the system. But the in and out team promised that uh, in some time this should be cured for the uh, version three with the net camera. Now for the single net device, the picture is slightly different. The sideline at the same side as the net device was still very accurate. However, the sideline opposite of the single net device uh, had a lot of uh, errors. Um, this was, uh, I believe, due to uh, poor calibration, although at another day we repeated this 
And so the calibration appeared to be very, very difficult um, with the lines on the clay court with Wildman camera. And we know that with hard court, it's much better. And the baseline, it's the same result, uh, a little bit more errors than uh, with the two paired results and uh, the same results for the service. In a second test with only one net device, but on hard court and optimal light conditions, we try to measure the percentage of errors under match conditions. The question was how many points of total points or shots in a match were according to the opinion of the players incorrectly attributed because of a wrong decision of the in-out device. For this purpose, we controlled three sets with 600 shots and 180 gain points by means of video. Nine times the players and the in-out had a different opinion whether a ball was in and out. Thus, we had a maximum of nine errors, five at the side lines opposite of the net device, three at the base line and one at the service line. It is now difficult to say to what extent the players or in out were wrong. We are coming now to the conclusions. For line calling, one single device produces too many errors, but the replay function can be used. For statistical data and match analysis, one device may be used on hard court under optimal conditions. Two paired net devices can improve the accuracy significantly. For an automated line calling, the number of errors is still too high. For statistical data and match analysis, the accuracy is more than sufficient. With two net and two line devices, an automated line calling may be possible under optimal conditions. We did not try it. We prefer to use the replay function to decide on close sports. One reason was also that people on neighbor courts complained about the signals. For statistical data or match analysis, the additional line devices are not required. My overall recommendation for in and out is to use the replay function as a low-cost Hawkeye with two pert net devices. In the coming video, I will show you how in-out can be used for a professional match analysis.